All right, so this file that I gave you, this is uh, a starting point. We have here a drawing of Bart Simpson. What we're going to do to fo to practice more is we're going to use the concepts we started last time about basic shapes to draw more complex characters. We saw we made letters, we made the bat signal. Here we're going to create Bart out of simple shapes. We'll do it guided together. We'll all try to create Bart together. And then I've got a folder for you available of like 10 other possible ones to choose from that then will be your work to turn in. So first we'll do a guided one and then you'll have the time to work on your own one. Uh, so I've opened up the file. Yes? So sound a bit slow on the headset. Sure. Um, so we're going to make shapes to recreate what we're seeing. Exactly. So yeah, we'll do it together. We're going to use basic shapes to recreate this character. Okay, so uh, when I opened mine up, it was too big. It doesn't fit on my screen. Yours probably looks fine. But remember, get used to the zoom in, zoom out, because that's going to be so helpful to do the details. Control plus to zoom in, control minus to zoom out. You also have on the mouse, if you hold control and then the scroll wheel, that'll help you zoom in and zoom out quickly. That's going to be very useful when you're going to draw some of these details. Also, once you're in a real drawing mood, a real drawing mode, uh, some of these panels get in your way. I don't need to look at the timeline panel at the moment. Uh, so notice you can close a panel. You can double click the timeline, for example, to close it. We're not going to quite animate at the moment. So the timeline panel may be in our way. You can double click its name to open it and close it. Same thing with the properties panel. You can double click it, although it doesn't close the same. You have a little double triangle. So the screen can be very cluttered, is what I'm getting at. And if you just want to focus on the drawing, you can close, you can hide panels. Or you can also press F4 on the keyboard. Notice everything then hides very quickly. I might, I might do that because my screen's a little bit smaller. So on the keyboard, F4 hides all your panels quickly. Also get used to using the space bar on the keyboard. Holding space bar lets you then get the hand to move around quickly. So you're able to scroll up and down, of course, with the uh, mouse scroll wheel. You can scroll up and down, but holding space bar and then clicking and dragging will let you drag around to different areas quickly. In my case, we should have then in the timeline, folder one, draw here, image. Image is the original scan. It's a guide. It won't show up. Then draw here is where we're going to draw. All of that's been organized into a folder. Um, so in the draw here, frame one is where we're going to start to draw. We're going to do this with basic shapes. So in general, like, what's the big overlying shape you may see on this character? Triangles. Triangles. I see that definitely in the hair. But what about the whole? Or square. Maybe a big square. Maybe a big rectangle. So maybe we'll start with a rectangle for most of the head. It looks like up to this point is a big old rectangle with some rounding, of course. That looks like a rectangle at a little bit of an angle. So let's start with a, with a rectangle. Let me get the rectangle tool. Any color doesn't matter. The thing about animate is that you can switch between colors very easily. But I'll try to get like a Simpsons type color, maybe somewhere here. And if I start to draw a rectangle, of course, it's not at the right angle, but we can fix that. I drew this rectangle, it had a stroke. The stroke, the edge of the shape looks a little bit smaller than what the original one is. So I could either undo that and choose a thicker shape, or after I drew it, if you double click the object to select it, then you can change the stroke. So either or, before you draw it, set the properties, or after you draw it, set the properties. You're always able to do that. What uh, looks like a good stroke instead of one? What fits a little better, perhaps? 
8.40. Let's check out 8.40. That might work. Any any stroke size that looks good to you could work. Uh, we'll have some amount. The uh, the tilt. This needs to be tilted over a bit, right? Uh, what was the tool where we can quickly uh, rotate objects? Q or the free transform tool. Remember those keyboard shortcuts. Free transform tool, double click the object to select it. Double click is very important because we've got an inside color and an outside color. If you only click once, you will only select the inside. And if you try to manipulate it, only the inside color gets manipulated. Make sure you double click to select both the inside and the outside. The stroke is a separate entity. So with free transform, you go somewhere on the corner, not actually touching a control point. Somewhere in the corner, you'll get the rotation indicator. Click and drag to rotate that shape a bit so that it kind of aligns more with the character's head. And you can move it into place somewhat. Doesn't have to be perfect, that's okay. Right, it looks like something like that. It may be hard to see behind it. So one thing you can do is, notice there's a bunch of icons down on the layers. The first column is to show and hide um, that layer. The next, the lock, is to lock it so that you don't make any more changes. We haven't used that one yet. And next to that is a color-coded <coughs> icon. If you click the little color, it shows you only the outline of the shapes you've made. That can be pretty useful. If I was drawing, for example, with the brush tool, and I wanted to see the edges of the brush, I can click that, uh, that column there, the show outlines, and it shows me that that brush that I drew is just edges. So the point here is that I can turn that on or off to see behind it. Did the computer crash over here? So the head is a rectangle here. Uh, the neck seems to be also some kind of rectangle, which we'll need to round eventually, and then the top of the shirt. So perhaps two more rectangles for the neck for the shirt. So get back to the rectangle tool. I can draw a sort of rectangle off to the side over here. I can try to draw it on top of where I think it is. That might work. But remember what happens there is that as soon as I drew it, it deselected it. So technically those two are separate objects. And if I try to move that one object, it cut out the other object. They were the same color, however. Didn't we see that same colors merge and different colors cut? Well, wh why, did the, why do you think this cut it? Yes. The border, exactly. The stroke around it is a separate color. So even though I drew it here, same colors, it saw a stroke, an edge, and it cut it. That might not be bad, but in this case, it, it is. It, it cut too much. So perhaps I will draw it outside over here somewhere. And I can select it, kind of put it into place, figure out if that was a good shape. Maybe 
is something like this. I've got this shape, that shape, somewhere around there. I've got it. It doesn't have to be perfect like mine, but uh, I've got this edge of this rectangle or square along this edge here. I'm going to click to deselect. I do want to merge this shape and this shape. This line is in the way. Well, this line is a separate entity. If you click one time on that edge, it selects it. And if you select it and press delete, it goes away. And there's no gap there. One of the interesting things about Flash is that when you put shapes on top of each other, I mean animate, when you put shapes on top of each other and uh, you delete the actual stroke, the edge, it doesn't create a blank spot. I need to remove this left stroke as well. If I click there, that finds it as a separate piece as well. It didn't find it as a whole long line here because wherever there are intersecting lines, that creates a new line. So a little sidebar right here, watch this. I'm going to draw a circle, and then I'm going to draw a plain old line through the circle. I had one circle, and now I've got one half of a circle, one half of a circle, and all of these pieces of the line. So when you intersect lines, that also creates new objects. That one circle now has become all of these pieces. As a matter of fact, if I was able to do so, I'd be able to select that piece and separate it. And I've got a half moon right here. So you see intersecting lines create an effect. Uh, different colors create an effect, same colors, it all creates these interesting results. This is the vector drawing in action. So what I'm trying to do is get that final little piece there. I'll click to delete that. So now I'm getting the the top of the head. I can hide the uh, guide for a moment. That's looking pretty Simpson-esque right there. Save your work. If it uh, complains about compatibility, just click yes. Okay, maybe next I want to draw the um, the ear. I can't see the ear. Remember, you can click the little color to show outlines, and I can see behind it the ear. That seems to be a simple circle. I'll turn that outline back. I'll go to the circle, draw a circle shape. Double click the circle to put it into the place. If it's jumping around too much, remember to turn off the magnets, the snap to object. I'm going to turn that off. I think it's going to be a little bit too much, uh, a little too much trouble with this character. So I'm going to turn off the um, snap to object, the, the magnet. I want to cut out well, an easy way to delete. I want to cut out a part of the, the circle there. I'm using the eraser. Let's go look at the eraser tool, the little pink eraser there. If you click and drag, I'm cutting out a little bit. Oh, your, your size of your eraser is probably small also. So let's go to the eraser. Let's click the options here and get a larger eraser shape. I'm trying to remove part of the ear. Something like that. Well, I removed 
part of the line of the ear, but I also removed the color that was there. No problem. If I get the paint bucket, if I have the color, I can then fill the color into that empty spot, and it uh, fills in. So I erased a little too much. I erased the edge and I erased the fill color. With the paint bucket, I can just fill back in the empty, the empty missing part. The eyes are also circles. Those two eyes, I can draw them pretty quickly with circles. So again, I will, um, I will do that. But let me show you here. We've been using a layer called Draw Here. This is what we've got so far. The head. Um, it's there's no right or wrong way to do this, but for practice, let's create a new layer to draw the eyes. We could do the eyes on the same draw here layer. Sometimes it's useful to separate your objects into different layers. I'm going to click a new layer. It's called layer 5. I'm going to call it eyes. Double click it to call it eyes. And then I want to lock the draw here layer. On the lock column, you can click the little dot to lock. So that means I will not accidentally draw on the wrong layer. Draw here, we should rename it. What should we rename the draw here layer to? What does it hold? What did we draw? The head, yeah. So let's rename draw here to head. So we can have a layer for one object, one series of content, another layer for a different one. So I'm locking the head. I'm going to make sure I'm on the eyes layer. And what's useful about that as well is I can hide the head and see the eyes. For the eyes, it's going to have white pupils, yes, but I want to have a slightly different shade of white so I can actually see it. So I'm going to go with a slightly gray, this color right here, because if I'm drawing a white shape and I've got a white background, I'm not going to see it. So I'm going to switch over to a slightly gray color first. And I want to draw this circle. And as I draw the circle, well, it's going out there, and, and I may miss where I'm trying to draw. So what you can do is you can start to draw from the center of the circle outward. Notice if you simply click and drag, perhaps you miss where to start your circle. If instead you hold Alt on the keyboard, and maybe start from the pupil, hold Alt, click and drag, and the circle drags from the center out. The eye has an eyelid. I could draw a circle on top of that to use as a line for the eyelid. That, of course, will be on top and crop it. So I have to uh, get creative in that I could draw the I could draw the eyelid, the, the circle of the eyelid out over there somewhere. And then what I could do, like I showed a moment ago, with the line tool, what if I make a line across that, and with the select tool, click once on the top, and that can give me a curve. Kind of interesting. 
interesting. That's kind of complex. Let me do that again. Let me take that back. I want to draw, well, here's an easier way that I just thought of. We're drawing with fills and strokes. I only need the stroke, the edge. Here's a really easy way to do it, maybe, with the line tool. That draws just a straight line. So what if I draw a line across over here somewhere, and then because they crossed, they intersected, I can select this piece and delete it. I can select that piece and delete it. And then I can curve this piece, clicking and dragging to curve. the top of the eyelid, it doesn't close completely, does it? If I show that, I only need up to a certain part. So I can erase that away. In this outline, in this outline mode, I can still use all my tools, the brush tool, the shapes, the um, eraser. It's just that it's an outline. So with my eraser, I can go over here and erase this part. It looks like that. What happened? Well, I turned my outline back on. That's where the color ended. That's, that's OK. Eventually, that's going to become yellow. With the paint bucket, I need my yellow color. So I'm going to select my color and drop it in. So the eye here has a piece of the skin tone, the eyelid. And then it has the eye, which at the moment I've made gray, so I can see it. But then when I've got the other layer active, it's starting to come together. So back on the eyes layer, I'm going to do something similar. I need a circle, put some lines there, curve the line a bit. Let's say for the other eye, I'm going to get the oval tool. But this time, I won't put a fill. Sometimes the fill gets in my way. I just need the outlines. I need the shape. So I've got, at the moment, the circle. I've got a black stroke and a yellow fill. Remember, we have the option to select no fill, no color. So if I click the fill. At the moment, I want no color inside of it. So if I select no color here, I'll just get a circle shape outline, no fill color, so I can draw the other eye, so that these shapes don't land on top of each other and cause me problems. So I'm going to get no color. I'm going to start with the, from the pupil, holding Alt to drag outward. Something like that. Click to select and then delete. With the line tool, I'm going to make his other eyelid there. And with the select tool, I'm going to select that piece that I don't want and delete. I'll select this piece, and then there's a little piece there, little piece there.
question? I'm just trying to increase, I'm just trying to increase my duration if I can get this right. What well, we can do. So I've got the shape of the eye, and I want to fill in then the color of the uh, of the skin tone. So again, paint bucket. Remember to click the paint bucket, and then select the color to extract the color. I'll fill in the um, eyelid up here. So I've got the top of the eyelid, and I only need a little piece of it so I can start that erase. I can start to erase again. With the paint bucket, then I can fill in the eye color. I'm just using the gray color for the moment. show the other layer and this is where it's coming at. You don't have to follow these lines exactly. If you want to get a little artistic, that's fine. Here, for example, you know, I could have erased this completely down here, but it kind of looks interesting here. It looks perhaps a little bit more uh, expressionful Because of the way that I drew it here, I also like this little edge of that curve and you can uh, be creative with it. Let's see, maybe the nose would be a good idea to do next. I could continue to use existing layers, or I can make new layers. I'm going to make a new layer just for the nose, maybe. Uh, it may work to keep you drawing the nose where the eyes are. That might be fine. You just have to decide as you practice with this what's working best for you. But I'm going to lock the eye layer. You want to click the circle on the column of lock the eyes for the moment. Perhaps I'm done with it at the moment. So I'm going to lock it and then create a new layer. Call it nose. So with the nose, let's see what we've got. The nose sticks out. There's a round part on it. That might be a good. Um, that might be a good um, circle. Maybe with a little square. Change the edges of that square. So I'm on the nose layer, I'll get the circle. I'll start off with no, no fill. It's often easier to add the color or the fill after starting to build together the shapes. So maybe I'll start with no fill yet. a circle here, I can maybe erase a little bit from it and then maybe curve the elements. So with the eraser tool, I can erase a little bit here. With the select tool. Remember you can pull you can pull uh, edges out. I pulled that nose out a little bit further so that it overlaps with other elements. It may then help me do that cutting. So I have 
so far. That was a circle that I erased a little bit and then pulled out the line. If I had the nodes and the eyes on the same layer, I could select the overlapping pieces like this and delete it. And over here, maybe I've got it on separate layers, so that's a different that's a different task. I want to color in the nose, but that won't work because it's not a complete, it's not a closed shape. The circle, I could fill in the colors because it was a closed shape. The rectangle was a closed shape. This circle, it was a circle, and then I deformed it to be a nose, but now it's an open shape. If I try to get the paint bucket and fill in the nose, it won't. Uh, it won't fill in. Well, what I could do is temporarily close the nose in a couple of ways with a stroke or a fill. So if I get, for example, the brush tool and then I get the Simpsons color and with a small brush Five is your default or so if you if you draw to close it that'll close I'm drawing something like that and it may cut your other line like it did for me there but then now that closed that shape. So if I can connect something like that, that's now an area that can be filled in. This is blank. Here's a shape. Here's a stroke. But that creates a filled in, a solid element, which then I can flick with the paint bucket to fill it in. You just need some closed shape with either uh, strokes or fills. As I then show my other layers, that's what I'm getting. With the eraser, I can fine tune that a bit. If you save and then do control enter to just take a quick look at it um, separate like that uh, so you can go um, control test or control enter here's what that looks like so far there's the mouth to work on the hair the eyes but it's getting really close Pause here. Anyone need a little help? Can you, anyone stumbling a bit? All right, let me be there one moment.
So you see here that this can be a really interesting way to to draw with shapes, shapes overlapping, and it uh, takes practice about which one would overlap with which one. So guys, they're a little bit a little bit quieter there. Angie and Alex are a little quieter, please. So uh, here are these different shapes. You see how they overlap with each other. I'm going to do the hair. The hair, I'm going to do it super simple. I don't want each little hair exactly perfect. But those are triangles. I can get the triangle and then start to make copies of those triangles and put it up there. So I'm going to try with a new layer. So I've got nose. Well, maybe I'll do it with the head, actually. Since I've already got the head layer, it might be easier. It might save me some effort. Uh, I'm going to go with head. I'm going to lock the nose. Make sure you click the head, and you unlock the layer as well. So I'm on the head layer. I want to draw the little spikes. I could use triangles. Here's another way. I'm going to use the line tool. With the line tool, I can overlap lines to make triangles. This, this may work. This may be too much work. We'll see. But with the, uh, with the line tool, it just draws plain old lines. I can draw, for example, starting over here, maybe, over here. I'm drawing these overlapping lines. Yes, it looks very messy at the moment, but once I cut away the pieces that I don't need, it should look like a nice triangles, nice hair. So in my case, I drew these overlapping lines. There are pieces, obviously, that I don't want. There's lots of lines here. What I could do is, with the eraser, start erasing. That's too much work. What I could do is select the piece that I don't want and delete it. That's too much work. There is a mode of the eraser that will help me quickly delete overlapping lines. There's a lot of overlapping lines here. So if I go to the eraser, and I don't know why they use this icon, but you then activate this faucet. This faucet will let you quickly delete lines that overlap. So with the eraser tool and the faucet option, you can click on the piece you don't want. And if it overlapped properly, it'll go away. If it didn't overlap, suddenly it'll delete a lot. But any of these lines that I've got that are overlapping, I can click that edge and it'll go away. So that's the eraser tool with the faucet option. That's much faster. That's like a select and a delete at once. If the line didn't actually overlap, however, it, again, it, it'll delete way too much, like that one. I just deleted that whole segment that I didn't want. If I hide my image layer for a moment, I deleted too much because it looks like the line overlaps, but it doesn't. This is a consequence that it looks like my lines are connected, and they're not. The stroke, perhaps, is too thick. Because the stroke that is there has a thickness, but it has to make sure it overlaps. So then if I try to fill in the color with the paint bucket, I can start to fill in those empty spots with the paint bucket. Keyboard shortcut K. I would recommend get used to using the shortcut K 
to jump quickly to paint bucket. So all of these shapes are filling in, except those. These two shapes here didn't fill in. They look like they're connected, but one way to confirm that is by turning that layer into an outline. And I see it now. I see that when it's a basic outline, uh, that doesn't actually connect. So sometimes you have a circle or an object that looks complete, and it's not. So try switching over to the outline mode, simply clicking on the color of the layer. Once it's there, in this same mode, you can then still pull out that edge and connect it. So now that I know that they're overlapped, I know that that's a uh, solid filled in shape. And with the bucket, I can fill in that color. With the eraser tool set to faucet mode, then I can clean up those little edges. And so there are then those various lines that are overlapping, that are closing, so I can make closed shapes. <clears throat> so I could have gotten the triangle tool and made perfect triangles. I did it a different way here. It looks like he's got a bad haircut, where he just has a head hair, bed hair. Uh, but. Um, you know, I'm not grading myself, so it's okay. If you um, want to further refine that, I can get the triangles, I can get the edges, I can move them, select tool, subselect tool. We haven't used the subselect tool. That's valid to do as well. Remember, with the subselect tool, you get the, the white arrow. You can click once on the edge to start to reveal the points, and then from here, manipulate these points. You might see you have more points than you thought. So with the subselect tool, you can further make some changes. If there's an extraneous point, you can click it and delete it. So even if you didn't draw those points exactly, I can still go in and further manipulate them. I can follow the original design or change it a little, that's fine. And then these extra points that I have, I can get rid of them. Simply click the point and delete it. something like that. Everything behind the scenes is just a mathematical formula. So I can still further manipulate the points and continue to refine it. We'll have an activity later where we will draw with the pen tool, which is a very powerful way to do this, but rather complicated for first timers. But it's still making points and shapes and fills. So let's see, I've got that much so far. Maybe I'll actually draw a little pupil here so that it doesn't look like a you know zombie or something. So in the eyes layer, I can put in the pupils, so I'll lock the head layer. One thing to do with the 
layers, make sure you're on the right one that you think. If I'm trying to edit a layer um, that is locked and I try to click, it'll pop up and say, the current layer is locked. Would you like to unlock it? You usually want to say no, meaning you're on the wrong layer. I need it to be on the on the eyes layer and I'm trying to draw on the head layer. No, I don't want to unlock it. That's going to be a mistake. So when that pops up, make sure you look at it. Oftentimes when we see a pop-up, we just click close or yes or whatever. Here, it's telling you, you're in the wrong layer. Would you like to unlock it? No, it's the wrong layer. So I'll click no and I'll make sure I'm on the eyes layer. So I can draw little round pupils. Sorry about that. Still unlocked. There we go. Still locked. So I'll turn on the eyes layer to actually edit it. And then I can draw some pupils. I can just very easily get the circle tool, draw them. I can get the brush tool and draw some Rick and Morty pupils if I want. That'd be fine. Um, I can draw it exactly how the original drawing is up on the corner. I can put it in the center here. It doesn't matter. Whoops, wrong color. No problem. I can change all of that. Remember, it's still editable. Let's see, I'll put them off over here. With the paint bucket, I'll put the proper color. Got some eyes, some pupils. I've got the hair, I've got the eyes, the nose, the ear. I need to put in the little line of the ear. That could be pretty easy. I need the mouth. I need the shirt. Let's say I'm going to finish up the ear. The ear is currently in the head layer. With the with the ear, maybe I'm thinking of two lines. I make a line here and curve it, and then a line here and curve it. So kind of like a T shape, but curved a little bit. So in the head layer, with the line tool, I'll zoom in here. This will give me more control. shape. Curve it a little here. Delete that piece. Curve it a little here. So I'm getting the edges. I'm getting the, the center part of it. I'm um, curving it. Does it look exactly like the drawing? Not really. That's okay. The general idea is a curve with another curve. Put it in here maybe and then getting something like that. So there's that little curve of the lip. I could try to do that with the subselect tool. Pulling it out over here somewhere. And then with the select tool curving it. Um, I'm not gonna try to get this perfectly just yet. We don't we don't quite have all the tools to get it perfect. That's pretty good. It's not that straight line anymore. 
I pulled out the ending point with the sub-select tool, and then I went back with the select tool and started to push and pull those lines around. Same thing with the neck. It's obviously very straight. If I just kind of curve that a little bit, it'll give it a little character. The back of the head, we've got a perfectly straight, maybe little curve there too. Just dragging that over slightly. The mouth, he's got a, an annoyed expression, I suppose. Um, I can change it a bit, line tool. Curve that. Line tool here. The original does have a lip. I don't have a lip here. I could do the lip as well with some circular shape, curving it, putting it into place. Let's see, based on the original drawing, there's some lip. Also, in my drawing, I've got the, the mouth really far down. With select tool, sub-select tool, I could shape this into that area a bit more. It might be helpful with the sub-select tool. So what if with this, in the outline mode, with the sub-select tool, I can click and I'll see these various lines. move them around depending on what you've drawn there that might be easy to do or not for the mouth I'll try the um, circle tool draw a little curve only with a stroke not with a fill And I'll remove the parts that overlap with the paint bucket. I'll fill it in. So selection tool to select and delete. Erase tool with the uh, with the. Uh, faucet mode will let you quickly delete things that overlap. The head connecting to the um, to the body here, I just that was the original rectangle. I just curved it down. Then I'll draw another rectangle behind it. I'll make a new layer. We've been making layers, and each layer goes on top of the previous layer. That's usually what we wanted. The eye is on top of the head. The nose is on top of the eyes. But in this case, the shirt is behind everything. So if I make a new layer on whatever layer I'm currently on, it'll put one layer right above it, and I can then drag the layer below where I need it to actually be. I need the shirt. If I drag the new layer below the other layers, I call that shirt. Then get a rectangle stroke, color, and 
then I'll have to manipulate the edges. Uh, I forgot to lock my head layer, so I was accidentally going to grab some pieces that I didn't want, so I want to make sure I lock layers I'm not working on. The rest of the body's down there somewhere, but I need to at least complete the shape so I can fill in the color. Since this will be printed out eventually, it should only print out the part that is in the canvas. So if I were gonna turn if I were gonna print this out to turn it in, I would need to remove that. It didn't matter that I went off of the edge, it doesn't exist if it's not on the canvas. Question. So here is the top of his shirt. Maybe pull this corner out over here. original, I'm going to put his eyes white now. That gray was just there so I can see the shapes. Put that back to white. It's not exactly perfect one-to-one, -one, but that's good. We started with shapes, lines, circles, triangles, whatever, these basic shapes. We, met, we bent them to our will to create this. Um, we're going to take uh, a quick break. When we come back, I'll show you about how to set this up to print. Then I'll give the actual uh, assignment. You'll have lab time to work on it. If you turn it in before you leave, great, you're done. If you need the weekend to work on it and turn it in on Monday, that's fine. I'll talk about the homework in just a moment. But let's take a break. It's about uh, 11.26. We'll be back at 11.36, and then I'll show you about the printing part.